Okay, I think uh, we're good to go. Um, so just just to uh, welcome everybody to the MEI Long, Young Learner webinar. Um, uh, my name is Lorcan O'Connor Lloyd. I'm the general manager of MEI. Um, for those not familiar, MEI is the National Association of English Language Schools in Ireland. Um, we have 70 members located all across the island of Ireland. Um, but today we're specifically talking about young learner programs and high school um, opportunities for 2023 going into 2024. Um, so we're, we're very grateful that you've taken the time out to join us today um, as, we, as we go through the courses that are available um, for this year. Um, so during this webinar, we, we aim to share with you some of the unique offerings at the language schools in Ireland, as well as giving you a better understanding of the high school opportunities for international students and the access to high schools in Ireland. We have two sessions planned for today. In session one, we will be presenting the summer centre programmes by region. Uh, we are fortunate to have four experienced ELT ambassadors who will give an overview of Dublin City, Ireland's Hidden Heartlands, Ireland's Ancient East and the Wild Atlantic Way. During each re regional presentation, we will also share with you the details for MEI member schools who have summer centre course availability for 2023. Um, we're specifically talking about summer programs today. Um, mini stays, uh, at this stage, much, much of the school's mini stay programs are, are, are already at close to capacity. And um, so we advise if you, if you do have any mini stay requests that you contact the schools directly on that. Um, in session two, we will be looking at an overview of high school programs in Ireland, at the process of applying to attend a school in Ireland, and the high level of care afforded to international students attending schools in Ireland. Again, we will present some of our members who have high school program availability for 2023 into 2024 season. To make sure that you're getting the most out of the presentations today, we have a chat box to source your questions. Uh, feel, feel free to drop any questions on your learner topics or any of the struggles, experiences or opportunities that, that, you, that have arisen in your work as an international agent. Um, we'll answer the questions by the end of each session. Um, don't need to be taking uh, too many notes in, in, in during the session because it will be recorded. We'll obviously share the presentation deck as well afterwards uh, in the coming days. Um, so before we kick off uh, today's session, I just wanted to give a very quick overview of young learner programs in Ireland. So in a typical year, there are approximately 60,000 young learners attending MEI schools. Ireland holds around 10% of the global ELT market. Um, we're a small country, but we're a dynamic uh, and competitive market. Um, we're, we're competing with large markets like the UK, Australia, the US, Canada, um, but Ireland's performance per capita is considerably stronger than its competitors. Um, the majority of students on young learner programs will be from the European Union. Uh, Italy and Spain will be our largest source markets for, for, for junior programs. Um, but also lots of students fr from uh, Germany, France, Austria, Switzerland, and, and growing interest from outside of the European Union as well, particularly in the high school programs. Um, the high school, I mean, obviously during the pandemic, the junior programs were effectively shut down, but the high schools was quite buoyant and actually grew during this period. So why are agents, students and parents choosing Ireland? Well, Ireland is a dynamic, lively and modern country. Um, we have a young population, a successful tech-oriented economy, um, but also remains a country steeped in culture and tradition, um, where music, conversation and making friends matters. Um, it's a small island, but an open society. Um, it's a very welcoming, safe country. Um, and I think it's important to note that Ireland is now the only native English-speaking country in the European Union. Quality education is at the core of what all of our members do. Um, in 2023, there will be further developments of the quality assurance measures through the introduction of a new regulatory framework uh, that will govern the ELT sector in Ireland. Um, the scheme is currently called the International Education Mark and will be open for applications in the spring with school inspections to follow shortly after. Um, aside from, I suppose, the, the culture in Ireland and, and obviously the strong ELT experience, um, it's also renowned for its beautiful unspoiled countryside and scenery. Um, the MEI language schools are, are located in, across the country um, for bustling towns and cities. Uh, and we want to give a highlight of that during our presentations today. Um, so I suppose what I'll do is I'll introduce the regional ambassadors who are going to speak more about the variety of location and junior program offerings in summer centres in 2023. Um, 
our first speaker, um, well, actually, our first ambassador that was lined up was is uh, Jonathan Quinn from the Center of English Studies. He's currently having some technical difficulties. He's meant to be presenting the Dublin schools, but I, I'll take over that if he's unable to join us. Um, speaker two will be Eva Mulvihill from Future Learning. Um, she's representing the Hidden Heartlands and Ireland's Ancient East. Speaker three is Noel Doyle from Equinox Education Services, also representing Hidden Heartlands and Ireland's Ancient East. And then speaker four representing the Wild Atlantic Way is Sonny Kennedy from Cork English College. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, please feel free to ask any questions um, in the chat box about uh, MEI schools, uh, Young Learner programmes will collect the questions and we'll get them answered before the end of each session. Um, as I can see on my screen here, I think Jonathan is still uh, struggling to join us at the moment. Um, he mentioned that he's been waiting six months uh, for some internet internet maintenance uh, and they've arrived just two minutes before this presentation. So uh, for now, I, I, I'll, I'll kick on with the presentation on Dublin city and suburbs. And if he's able to join, hopefully at some point, he might be able to answer some questions and talk a little bit about Dublin. Uh, so Dublin city and suburbs. Dublin is the capital city of Ireland. Um, it has a population, a metropolitan population of around about 1.5 million people. Um, it would be, suppose, the main international travel hub for Ireland. Um, compared to many European capitals, uh, it's considered a very safe and secure place. Um, we have excellent public transport um, and a great public bike system. Um, while it's a big, big cosmopolitan city, it also um, is small enough that you can kind of travel around on foot or by bike reasonably easy. Um, I can see Jonathan is joining so i don't know if he wants to join to, to hop on halfway through a slide or <laughs> <laughs> yes timing is perfect when you have yeah. your uh, internet router box redone uh, yeah thanks lorcan and apologies everybody for the slight uh, glitch um yeah i'm sure lorcan has touched on the fact that um dublin uh, capital of ireland uh, main international airport in and out uh, but the beauty of dublin is also that it's it's a big city uh, 47 kilometers from north to south but the transportation uh, facilities are fantastic within Dublin uh, with the Lewis the bus and the dart um, and there's also a great mix now uh, uh, because it's been huge investment in the city uh, in terms of modern uh, up-to-date uh, visitor attractions for the kids as well as the older uh, more historic things like the you know Trinity College the National Art Galleries um, there's also a fantastic range of theatres and, and concert venues. So some students uh, like to take advantage of that. We always have groups, for example, that would do the Riverdance show, which uh, is always held in the Gaiety Theatre and is very, very popular. Um, <clears throat> and there's also obviously the the uh, the parks, like in, in, in one of our junior centres, we're quite lucky because we're, we're located next door to uh, St Anne's Park, which was a huge park initially set up by the Guinness family. And you also have the Phoenix Park, which is located in the centre of Dublin, which is the largest, largest park within the confines of a city uh, in Europe. And it's also famous because it has the, 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 the deer roaming the park. And then again, um, uh, some of the members have schools uh, in, in some of the coastal villages uh, that are uh, around Dublin. So I know that there's a centre that I'll touch on a wee bit later on, out in Dawkey, centre out in Sutton and Hoth. Um, and again, they would be two very popular destinations for junior groups when they're when they're staying in Dublin. Um, so if I move on perhaps to the next slide, because I'm quite conscious of, uh, of, of the time and my colleagues not not cutting into their time allotted. And um, that's a lovely photograph there of Hoth. And, and in the in the in the, the background there, you have a famous Hoth 17, which is the oldest one design sailing class in the world. Um, and then, yeah, Centre of English Study. So CES has two junior centres located in the, the, the city, just to the north of Dublin City. And um, we've been in both those centres for a very long time. Um, we run your standard general English language and activity programme with activities and cultural visits in the afternoons. And we also uh, run a rugby programme in July. And the rugby programme we won, uh, run in connection with uh, the Irish Rugby Institute who are a great bunch of guys based out of Setonians Rugby Club. Um, 
Next up, you have City Language School, uh, and you can see there that the, the contact is Lucy Greaves, and their their school is located. It's a great actually name. It's the Dubliner School, and um, their school is located in Drundrum, which would also be the location of probably the most famous uh, shopping centre in 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 Ireland. An incredible installation, uh, with families all located in and around the same area. Um, and as you can see there, their Dubliner experience, which is lovely. Um, again, the famous a photograph of the famous Hapenny Bridge located um, in the centre of Dublin that crosses from Temple Bar over to the north side, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think I, I did a quiz yesterday and there's 20,000 people cross the bridge a day. So it's, it's, it's and it's one of the most iconic photograph spots uh, in Dublin. Then Atlas um, have a fantastic uh, centre in Rathmines, which is one of the suburbs that's located quite close to the city centre. And Atlas's program is quite unique as well, because as they were saying here, they have um, they operate uh, private buses daily to bring the kids to and from the homestays, which is is quite unique. And Atlas has been around for a good while and have gained a serious pedigree uh, within within the marketplace here in Ireland. And then ISI Dublin, again, the city centre location, they have a very uh, good um, year round English language school and their program is located um, in, in the heart of the city as well. Um, and uh, has been operating for, for over 20 years. Um, you can see uh, uh, some of their, their, their main selling points. And also we have a copy there. Uh, and all of this uh, information, I'm sure Lorcan is going to be supplied, that the, the contact people from all the schools uh, will be available for anybody who's, who's, who's uh, tuning in. And then again, this is this photograph was taken at uh, Grand Canal Dock. So behind uh, the, the, the boat that you see, the Viking uh, Adventure River Cruise, you have the famous um, um, Three Arena, which is the new theatre that's based uh, in right in the heart of, of what's now lovingly known loan in, in Dublin as Google Landia, because Google are located quite close to this area. And, and a lot of the people who work in Google would, would live in that general area. And then the Lingua Viva Centre, this is a particular program, which is a young uh, adult program uh, where students can stay either in, in homestay accommodation or in uh, residential accommodation. And again, uh, located in the very heart of, of, of Dublin City, which is, is unique. Again, it's for the older students uh, that aren't quite adults, but aren't quite kid the kids, as they say. Um, twin. Uh, also have a centre and it's located um, as one or two others are in, in, in Belvedere College, which again is at top of North Great Georgia Street, located in the city centre, one of the most famous schools in Dublin uh, with fantastic facilities. Um, and I know that uh, from, from the information we have, Twin have availability for uh, individual students. I'm sure if you contact them directly, they'll be able to let you know whether they have uh, any space left for groups. There's always a little bit of wriggle room. Um, but again, very impressive centre. And I know that there's one or two other schools that are, are, are located in, in, in Belvedere as well. And again, this is a, a photograph of one of the more fashionable shopping uh, malls in Dublin, the St. Stephen's Green Centre located at the top of St. Stephen's Green, which is a fantastic uh, facility for us mm -hmm. to have located directly across the road from, from the St. Stephen's Green Park as well. So the, the students, the young the young learners will get a chance to buy some bread and go and feed the ducks if they want to, which is uh, one of the traditional things you do here in Dublin. Um, then Apollo, a very successful junior summer centre. Um, and Apollo are based in uh, Sutton um, Park School, which is located to the north side of Dublin City. Again, it's a beautiful small centre, um, very well run by the guys in Apollo and um but it's purely to 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 their to their um hard work and endeavors they've won as you can see there the the, the study travel magazine oh, for four years in a row and a bit like the atlas school apollo offer private transfers to and from the school daily which is a, a unique selling point as well and then david uh, the lovely Eva will talk a wee bit more about future learning but david they've done very very well they've a few centers around ireland uh and and have grown in expertise, they run specific programs. Uh, you can see there the stream, which have become very, very popular uh, over the last couple of years. And again, uh, located in Belvedere College, which is a five minute walk uh, from the school into the city centre, which is fantastic and homestay accommodation as well and residential, uh, which is brilliant. You know, I mean, located, as I said, 
one of the things that the kids really appreciate is the fact that they're in the city centre, so so that they have the city on their doorstep. Um, again, the aforementioned deer that are based in 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 uh, in the Phoenix Park, uh, and it's one of the things that people don't really believe you when you say no, no, no. There's actually wild deer roaming the park. I think the the, the they number about two hundred and fifty at this stage, and and they're tended to by the park attendees. Uh, in the Phoenix Park, but it's one of the things that students get a real kick out of. Um, and then next on our list, uh, again, and apologies for, for, for my speed here, but there's quite a few, Dublin being the biggest city, we've got probably the, the biggest number of schools uh, uh, that, that fill this space. Uh, Dublin Cultural Institute with Jonathan Diagnan. And again, their school is located to the north of the city. Um, I'm just double checking there now exactly where if if because I know I should have I have this here beside me, um, but they're up in 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 the North County Dublin, which again, uh, there's great uh, train and and bus routes that can bring uh, the kids into the city centre. Um, our next uh, is the Francis King Centre, which again is located um, in in Dublin City. Um, it's in Dorky, which is. Um, Probably one of the most prestigious areas of, yeah. of Dublin, uh, famous for having exclusive neighbours such as Enya and uh, Enya and, and and Bono from U2, which is always always nice to have. Uh, but it's a beautiful part of the world, and again, it's about a thirty five minute train ride from Dalkey uh, into the city centre, and it's a fast, a fantastic train ride as well because you're right going uh, coming in by the seaside, which is lovely. And then again, this is the, the Campanelle in Trinity College. Uh, Trinity College is the oldest university in Ireland, uh, dating back from seven, the 1760s, I think it is. And again, it's one of the most iconic um, uh, seeds of learning in Ireland, but it's also probably one of the most visited as well, because uh, one of the, the most popular thing I know definitely for our low season groups uh, coming in, in the wintertime, Trinity is always top of the list in, 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 in the things to visit where students get a chance to have a walk around the university and then they go in and see the famous Book of Kells, which I think is currently working. It's about 12 euros um, um, per person to go in and see the Book of Kells, which, again, Ireland, as I'm sure the, the guys will touch on uh, uh, later on as well. The costs have gone up, there's no doubt about that, uh, for a number of the att attractions, but I think that's that's the same right across right across the globe, given the, the price increases that we're seeing. Uh, one of the stalwarts of 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 the the the, the industry Emerald Cultural Institute, uh, found in 1989, you know, and lovely Scarlet there is will look after any needs and uh, needs or, qu or questions and inquiries, and I know um, uh, Emerald have a few different centres around the city, um, and they cater also for quite a wide range of of ages, which is fantastic from from the perspective of agents can come, and I know that they start kind of nine ten year old right up to 16, 17, 18. So, so it covers quite a broad range of, of, of um, uh, for, for, for agents. Um, and then ATC, again, uh, Ugo and, and, and Colm have been <clears throat> running the ship for a long time, um, founded by Pia, who, who would have um, you know, been one of the, 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 the grand ladies of the business. And ATC have grown and grown over the last number of years, and they have a, a wide range of, of options, both homestay and residential in a number of different locations, as you can see from the map there. Uh, but they would also have a number of other locations located around Ireland as well, which which I know Aoife and, and, and um, Sonny will touch on. Um, and again, a very experienced operation, uh, which is very important when you're discussing, you know, sending over kids. I think that's one of the things particularly, you know, that the parents are very interested in and, and, and keen to see that um you know that when they're sending over their 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 kids they are going to be very well looked after which is one of the i think it's the the, the highest virtues that we have in mei that when and when kids are sent over to any of the centers uh, that are mei accredited that they will be looked after um uh, and taken care of and then brendan um uh, who looks after mli again uh, a big summer operation and they would have a number of different uh, locations throughout ireland um, and they do both homestay and residential and, and they do the full gambit of, of courses and programs. Uh, and they would also do quite a lot of um, uh, low season groups as well. Um, Brendan and Therese, who, who've been running MLI for, for a long time as well. Um, 
So now I'll, I'll hand over to Aoife, if that's all right, and, and she can take up the gambit. And again, apologies for my lateness getting, uh, getting onto the call. Um, thank you very much, Jonathan. And thank you very much for all the information there of the wonderful Dublin schools that we have on offer through MEI. Um, thank you also, Larkon, for the introduction earlier on. And welcome to you, all of the agents who've, who've come here today. I'm delighted to present Ireland's Ancient East and Ireland's Hidden Heartlands um, as a region, as well as the schools that we have here that are operating summer programs for young learners. So, um, yes, as you may see, this map is quite small. Um, Ireland's Ancient East comprises of a series of um, counties on the east part of Ireland. And then we move into Central Ireland, which comprises the Ireland's Hidden Heartlands. Um, and as many of you already may know, Ireland is a beautiful country. It's quite green. It's full of lakes. There's coastal beaches and villages. Um, and there's quite, you know, we don't have massive mountains, but we do have some mountains and, um, and some nice hills and pastures. So um, it's, it's really lovely to be able to welcome international students across these locations. Um, and, you know, because we're a small country, majority of our clients would come through into Dublin Airport. And within an hour, within 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, you're, you're exposed to all of these wonderful, um, beautiful scenic places. Um, there are many um, uh, legends about the areas. Um, there's many small towns, villages. Ireland is a very warm and welcoming environment. Um, and there's a variety of attractions and even uh, many of the Dublin schools that would have their summer centres in the Dublin area, north or south, would then go out to Glendalough, for example, as a, as a full day excursion. So these places are within easy access for the Dublin schools, for the regional schools, um, like Kilkenny Castle, Tom McNoise, um, and obviously then um, you've got the various um, um, visitor attractions in Dublin as well for day trips. So this is just a photograph of um, the beautiful Glendalough uh, in County Wicklow, the ancient um, sixth century monastic settlement. And many um, young learners would have experienced this during their mini state programs throughout the year, during their summer programs. Um, and it's a beautiful, it's a it's a beautiful tourist attraction and people really, really enjoy seeing that the drive out from Dublin or the drive from Carlow or Kenny is quite nice as well. So first up um, is ATC. Um, Jonathan has mentioned them already, a well-established language school with really good staff, really good centres. And in Ireland's Ancient East, the two centres where they're located are in are Maynooth University and Kilkenny College. And right now they still have good availability for both of those centres. Um, the point of contact is Louise Hunter. Her details are there. Lurkin is going to send you a copy of this presentation afterwards so you can direct your queries to her if you have any interest in, in these two locations. Um, in Maynooth, um, they have the, the residents, uh, Maynooth and Kilkenny. So um, in, in Maynooth, they have the residential option um, and a homestay option. And in Kilkenny, it's the residential only. Um, up to age 15. So um, some of these programs, the, the 17 year olds, it's available in Maynooth, but in Kilkenny, it's just a younger age group. Um, and Kilkenny city itself is a beautiful city right um, in the Ireland's ancient east, just about an hour and a half from Dublin um, and a really nice location of Kilkenny College, a private school there. So they've quite a number of um, innovative programs for young learners. And Louise will be really happy to go through all of those then with you. Um, next up is my very own future learning. Um, John mentioned our centre in Dublin. Um, so we also have a centre center in Athlone, which is the centre point of, of Ireland, um, right in Ireland's hidden heartlands. It's just an hour and a half from Dublin Airport. And here we run our STEAM programme um, for students aged 11 to 17. Um, now, for, for some reason, <laughs> the presentation has just gone off my screen there. Um, so I wonder if I can share my... So you just have to bear with me while the MEI office um, just 
uh, fix this technical difficulty. Which school do you guys use, Aoife, in, in Athlone? So in Athlone, we use the TUS, the Technical Technological University of Shannon and the Midlands, the university campus. Okay. Um, and we have a residence option for our young learners, and we also have um, homestay family. Um, and in Athlone, the families are quite warm and welcoming, and they actually drop the students uh, to the university for their classes. Um, it's a STEAM program, so it's a, it's a quite intensive program. You've got 22 and a half hours a week. Um, there's the, the morning classes for the students right. to do an e-portfolio and, and they're in, introduced to digital tools. And then in the afternoons, they've got tr three STEAM activities. So it could be a science experiment, it could be engineering, it could be arts and crafts. Um, and and the, the, the great thing is that um, no matter what age group no matter what age the student is, like we are offered from, from age 12 to 17, or what level they test at, um, each student will get to do their own e-portfolio e while they're here. Um, thank you, Lurkin, we'll see we're back in action now. And there's a nice photograph there of the baking is quite popular um, activity. Students love to make their own muffins, or they like to learn how to make traditional Irish bread or a nice apple tart. Um, it's a nice opportunity to introduce some of our, our traditions and cultures uh, who are international guests. Um, then next up, we've McDonald's Language Academy, and they're located in Kilkenny City. Um, this is a fabulous uh, uh, city um, for, for young learners because it's quite small in terms of how cities go on globally. Uh, the population is about maybe 25,000. Um, and they, they have a great program running from the 11th of June right up to the 27th of August. And Isha McDonald is the lady in charge there um, to contact um, about availability and uh, if you have um, young learners interested in this. Um, the host families, again, they provide the transfers to and from the centre. They're all inclusive packages. And they're, they're really proud of being able to offer their summer programs to quite a wide range of different nationalities, which is great for the nationality mix um, in Ireland. There is a photograph of the Kilkenny Castle and the river running underneath it. Um, there's quite narrow streets and lovely footsteps between the streets as well. It's a beautiful place to go. And again, like that, um, locate language schools in Dublin um, would often come to Kilkenny on day trips. It's only an hour and a half on the train. There's buses as well. Um, and obviously if they're organized in an activity, there would be the private transfers. Um, and now I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, Noel, who's going to take over and continue on with other language schools from Ireland's ancient East and Ireland's hidden heartlands. So here you go, Noel. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Thank you very much, Aoife. Um, uh, as Aoife said, uh, we're sharing uh, our area here of the ancient East and the heartlands. Um, so Aoife has touched on many of the highlights for the area. And I'll just go through a few more uh, schools. Uh, just a couple of extra uh, points. Um, uh, most of the schools in the area would be in medium sized towns. Uh, so while we wouldn't be uh, as big as Dublin, etc. We just offer something a little bit different, uh, and of course, we would always go to the, the likes of uh, Dublin for our, our day trips, etc. Um, we would also have a lot of the schools would be uh, family run uh, with a lot of uh, years of experience. I think we calculate it's about two hundred years of experience if we combined all of the schools. Um, uh, I suppose. One of the advantages as well is uh, a lot of the host families would be within walking distance of the centres because the towns would be that little bit uh, smaller. Uh, OK, uh, so we just uh, go through the rest of the schools uh, that are in the area. The first here is the Slaney Language Centre, which are based in uh, Wexford Town in um, the, the southeast of Ireland, a beautiful location. Um, uh, Lisa would be your contact there and they have very good uh, availability at the moment. They run uh, summer programs in April also, uh, and also from around the 19th of June to the 25th of August, which covers most of the, the summer period. Uh, 
some of their kind of unique uh, features would be uh, like a lot of schools in a very safe and a friendly uh, environment uh, with a personal uh, atmosphere with a very good and exciting uh, activity program uh, for the young learner. Uh, next is our own uh, Equinox Education Services. Uh, our main center in the summer is based in uh, Carlo, which is approximately about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes from Dublin. We also have smaller centers in Atai in County Kildare and Tarlas uh, in County Tipperary. Uh, our programs run uh, from the 3rd of July to the 4th of August uh, with some uh, good uh, availability. Uh, I suppose some of our, our kind of key points is we have very experienced team and staff. Uh, all of our host families are within walking distance or the host family would uh, drive them to and from the center. And 80% of our clients tend to be repeat clients or referrals. And the next school then would be Twin English Ireland, which Jonathan uh, uh, gave a good overview as they're based in Dublin as well. But they also have a, a center, summer center in uh, Waterford, which has a uh, good availability also at the moment. Um, their summer dates are from the 2nd of July to the 30th of July. So basically the, the, the whole month of July. Uh, some of their kind of unique features would be uh, they are based uh, in the, the Southeast Technical University campus. Uh, so some excellent and modern facilities there. Uh, they offer single ensuite accommodation with uh, a lot of attractions and sites uh, in the area. Uh, next one then is the Shandon Language uh, Solutions. Uh, they are kind of a nationwide organization, an excellent organization that have been going there for many years. Uh, OWN is your main contact there, and they have very good availability at the moment. Uh, some of their kind of unique features would be full immersion uh, in Irish host families. And they also offer host families with children of a similar age, which I know is uh, very attractive to, to, to a lot of clients. And they also offer one nationality uh, per family. So uh, that's uh, uh, it for our area. So we're going to hand you over now to Sonny, who will uh, talk about the Wild Atlantic Way. Thank you. Many thanks, Noel. Uh, hi, everyone. Great to see so many people on the call and so many familiar names. Um, if you're not familiar with myself, uh, my name is Sonny Kennedy. I'm uh, the Marketing Manager in Cork English College, and I'm going to be speaking to you about uh, eight different schools and summer centres along um, Ireland's Wild Atlantic Way. So for those of you not familiar with the Wild Atlantic Way, it's uh, a 2,600 kilometre coastal route along the west coast of Ireland stretching from Donegal in the northwest all the way down to Cork in the deep south. Um, it's very well connected with, re with regional airports such as Cork Airport, Kerry, Shannon, um, Ireland West and County Mayo, and as well as Donegal. Um, and of course, we'd also have um, strong bus and train routes all along the west coast. As you'll see, it's home to some of Ireland's most stunning scenery. Um, in the top picture there, you have Dune Brishta in County Mayo. And in the bottom, you've Dune Quinn in uh, West Kerry in the southwest corner. Um, and all along the coast, you'll find a wide choice of school options. So from family run uh, schools in towns and villages to larger city, se city center based centers um, all along the coast. And I might be quite biased, but I suppose we also feel in the West that we have incredibly warm and welcoming people uh, across the region and also working in the centers also. So. So the first of our schools, um, and I know it's, they've been mentioned already, uh, ATC language schools, the point of contact there is Louise, Louise Hunter. Um, she's already been in touch with me via, via WhatsApp to update me that uh, their summer center dates in the University of Limerick are actually the, the first, the 30th of July. So just that four weeks in July. And like I said, they're based in Limerick, which is in the, the uh, in, in the, in, sorry, in the city of Limerick in the Midwest. For their center, 
They have full immersion in host family, um, host family with children of a similar age, and they also promise uh, one nationality per, per family. And on that one as well, the age is actually 11 to 15 rather than 17 for their center in UL. Then we have MLI, uh, International Schools, located in Galway City in the Atlantic Technological University. Um, the point of contact there is Brendan. And when it comes to the centre there in Galway, they have excellent residential locations, a great mix of international clients and tour operator groups, which return year on year as well. Um, so they're well familiar with the, the location and how the centre operates. Uh, just an image here for you. You might recognise it if you're a fan of Ed Sheeran. Um, this is the long walk in Galway City Centre, a beautiful walk all along the River Carrow. And then our next school is our uh, one of our partner schools in, in Killarney, in County Kerry, um, by Fergal, um, the beautiful town of Kerry with Killarney National Park, which is well worth a visit. And they are open right across the summer, so from the end of June to the 1st of September. Some of their features, they offer full immersion in Irish host family, again, host family with children of similar age, and they also promise um, one nationality per family um, for all of their host family placements. Oops, skipped an image, just have a picture of the Gap of Dunlow, located not far from where Fergal is based there in Clarny Town. And then you have ourselves, so uh, Cork English College, we have two junior centres in the city of Cork, um, our host family centre in Douglas on the south side of the city, and a residential centre in MTU um, on the west side of the city, and you have the contact as myself there um, for our junior programmes. When it comes to our centres and our programmes, we offer high quality and dynamic sports and STEAM programs. We have a wealth of fun activities and excursions within Cork and around Munster. Um, and we offer safe, secure and fully supervised centers as well um, for all of our junior students. Following on from Cork, we have Clare Language Center uh, based in Ennis. Um, the contact there is IFA. And when it comes to their availability, they have good avail availability depending on nationality. And again, they're open across the summer from mid-June to mid-August. For their centres, they offer excellent, warm and welcoming host families, uh, beautiful excursions right on the doorstep, the most famous being the Cliffs of Moher, and interactive activities with local activity leaders, um, so the students come home with a, with a clear accent, um, all going well. I mentioned the Cliffs, you have them here, um, if I go back, oops, can't hear where are they? Oh, there, here we are. Um, so you have the Cliffs of Moher, um, which I'm sure you've all seen and presumably visited if you've been to Ireland. Um, their next school, we have Atlantic School of English and Active Leisure, located in Skull in beautiful West Cork. Um, Barbara is the point of contact there, and they have good availability all across the summertime. Some of their unique features, so they're located right on the Atlantic coast, um, safe and welcoming town, the town of Skull. Um, and they purposely choose to have small numbers so that they can maximize the time between student and teacher interaction. Next, you have uh, Future Learning for Aoife and David. They're located on the West Coast in the Atlantic Technological University in Sligo in the Northwest corner. Uh, they have uh, limited homestay availability, availability from the start of July and some residential availability. And then they have more uh, in the last two weeks of July and into the month of August. When it comes to their center, um, it's, they're based in Sligo Cultural, they have a Sligo Cultural program, including surfing, project-based learning, and an e-portfolio -port, e using digital tools. They're based um, on a university campus, and they offer um, programs for homestay and residence groups, um, not individuals. Then Apollo, located um, in two university centers in Limerick and in Cork. They have good availability across their summer months. Uh, the point of contact there is IFA. And when it comes to both centers, um, as Jonathan would have touched on, they've won um, awards with study travel for four years in a row. They offer private transportation to and from their host families. And then they also offer single ensuite campus accommodation on their residential options also, be it in Limerick or in Cork. So just to round off, just a nice image there for you of, I believe it's Kinsale, which is in Cork. And that's that. So I'll just hand back to Lorca now for anyone if they've uh, any questions. Great. Thanks to, uh, to all of our panelists on, on, on the uh, Summer Centre programmes. I, I don't have any questions in the chat box, but I don't know if any of our ambassadors have any general comments about, uh, about summer programmes in Ireland before we move on to the high schools. 
I think one one slight point um, Lorcan is that um, given the pent up demand, I think we're seeing um, you know the bookings are coming in thick and fast, and and sometimes people think that you're kind of making it up that uh, no 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 we're nearly full. But in terms of, um, you know, Italian groups, Spanish, French, you know, and the, the, the bookings are flying in. So I would, you know, urge agents if they are looking to send a group over to contact whatever school that they're interested in as quick as they can. There will be obviously spaces kept by schools for individuals, but for groups, particularly if it's a bigger group, uh, they need to get moving or else the spaces will be gone because I think we're still limited from our perspective anyway, I know the residential schools are fine um, or in a, in a, they, they can manage their numbers, but family-wise, we're still being quite cautious. So that's one of the things perhaps to keep in mind. That would be my only uh, um, um, addition, shall we say. Yeah, I think that's a very fair comment. Yeah. Um, just one question into the uh, chat box here actually a few coming in here and um, could you please give information about the minimum and maximum stays for the programs is it possible to join the programs while they are running well, yeah again yeah um once the program starts so we will kick off and as i'm sure many will kind of the the 26th of june for a period of six to eight weeks and a student can join minimum course duration for, for CES at least is two weeks. And I think that's fairly standard across um, most of, of, of our colleagues. And then, yeah, a student, as long as, as, as they're within the confines of the opening and closing dates, they can join whenever they want because there would be kind of continuous uh, uh, groups arriving over, over that period because students will be coming from different durations for two to four to six weeks. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, what another question here from Leon? Uh, what if we book for individual students three weeks in one center and three weeks in another? Would it be possible to arrange a transfer between them and not too expensive? Yeah, I know a number of MEI members do offer these sort of programs where you can do a couple of weeks in one center and another, uh, a couple of weeks in a different center, and even, I mean, obviously we're talking about Irish. Uh, based uh, ELT schools here, but some of our providers who would have um, summer centres in the UK as well offer programmes where you can do, say, a couple of weeks in the UK and a couple of weeks in Ireland. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it is definitely possible. I just, I suppose I'd encourage you to to contact some of our providers who have multiple centres and they'll be able to make an arrangement with you. But as Jonathan said, um, you need to be making these inquiries as early as possible. Uh, Another question here, will the school send out the price list to our email addresses individually? Yes, yeah, there's all the schools participating on the panel here and um, all of our members who have summer center programs available will we'll, we'll follow up with, with the participants um, on this webinar. Um, and obviously, as we we'll, as as we mentioned a few times, we'll be sharing the slides and all the contact details. So, if there's specific to schools that you have inquiries about question about prices, on we can do that. Um. Yeah, just a question. There are family programs available as well. Yeah, they are. They are ultimately. Uh, again, it's just about getting in in time. Um particularly if there's uh, specific accommodation requirements. Um, Ireland is very busy in the summer, not just for language schools, but for general tourism as well. So just if uh, you have a family who have specific accommodation requirements, they need to get those those questions in as, as early as possible. And I think there's there's some language schools, um, some MEI language schools that specialize in family programs, for, like for small children, teenagers, and parents would all travel together. Um, so I know one of the schools that Sunny featured there um, along the Wild Atlantic Way, Killarney School of English, they have a lovely family um, programme available to families at the moment. Um, and I guess it's just a matter of looking through the, the, the other schools and seeing which other ones have, have family programmes available as well. Um, because there are um, not so many schools do organise that, but there would be some that, that do.
yeah uh so um one of the question from Nadia just saying uh, I suppose this is the follow up to the sending out price lists um and availability just um if schools could also indicate if they have avail availability for individuals for the summer um I think some of the panelists um had a, had one or two examples but in terms of um uh, we, we, what we'll do is we'll ask the schools, um, the school representatives, to to send you that what the the type of availability they have, whether it's just individual, if there's just groups or they have individuals as well. Um, a question here, which I think probably best for Efa and future learning. Um, what are the level requirements for programs that include STEAM projects? Well, we we accept um, students from. Um, elementary to advanced. Um, now, ideally, if they have an intermediate level, they can participate more. Um, but we do accept students at a, at, at a younger at a younger level to allow for um, young learners to to to, to come to our programs. Um, once they do their level test, they're placed in the class with students of the same age group, uh, or sorry, the same level. Um, and then their teacher then does a, a needs analysis and um, a, a self-assessment on their collaboration skills, their language skills, and their technological technological skills. And that's the basis of the project-based approach. Um, the, the, the teacher introduces digital tools that they'd be able to use at that level. Um, and then they're, they're pushing groups where they collaborate together on a project. Um, and then they work on their own e-portfolio separately as well and that's the that's a good thing because no matter what level they test at so a person could be elementary or pre-intermediate but they could be very creative and they could do a very good e-portfolio with lots of images and videos and then another person could be very literate and they could have very nice content um so it does kind of cater for for all age groups um and then I think the other the other language schools around Ireland that offer the STEAM programs as well, they do have the age the ages mentioned on their own um, individual websites and, and information. And I guess then, like after this call, um, all of the schools that have been featured, we're, we're all given the opportunity to email the agents who've attended here today all of our information, and hopefully then uh, all of those questions will be answered for, for on everybody's behalf. Yeah, a couple of questions to to that effect. They're just requesting contact details and uh, recordings of the of this webinar. So yeah, of course we'll we'll share that out with everybody afterwards. Um, we have all of your email addresses from the registration onto the webinar. Um, so I think that's it in terms of the summer programs. Unless anybody has any final points to add, but I think we've we've covered quite a bit. Um, so with that, I think we'll move on to high schools. So um, representing the high school sector in Ireland today, we have two speakers. We have firstly, um, Declan Miller from High Schools International. So I'm going to hand you over to Declan, who's going to give an overview of um, uh, the access into secondary schools in Ireland uh, and the process of doing so, and uh, a little bit about the guardianship elements as well. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, great to be here and great to see so many people. Um, so high schools is uh, it's a more difficult presentation than um, than young learners because high school is kind of an amorphous program. Uh, it's not divided up into regions, and um, we all pretty much do those who offer high schools pretty much do the same anyway. As Lorcan said at the beginning, uh, one of the features of high school programs in Ireland is that while most other um, study abroad programs uh, either disappeared or suffered during the pandemic, uh, high schools didn't. A combination of factors: the fact that America, Canada was closed, that Australia, New Zealand was closed, or were both closed rather, and that England had gone through this uh, convulsion of uh, Brexit. It made Ireland a very attractive proposition uh, for high school destination and programs in 2020, 21, and to some extent 2022. It's also gone through a major change. Um, sorry, Lockin, can I, how do I access the um, slides or do you access the slides? Um, I could I can do it for you now. Well, whatever. Anyway, I just can't yeah. see what's coming up, so I don't know. 
Um, but there's been a number of significant changes in the whole high school um, uh, landscape in Ireland, and probably the most difficult one, uh, and the one that we had most difficulties and will continue to have most difficulties, is the availability of accommodation. Um, for a combination of reasons, uh, mainly uh, two factors. Uh, one is initially fear of COVID and the pandemic, and uh, that has lessened to some extent, but it hasn't gone away. There are less families willing to take students. The second big factor, obviously, is the fact that um, the, uh, there are more people working from home. And because there are more people working from home, there are less rooms available in houses. Um, so uh, that's probably one of the bigger factors. And probably a third factor is the fact that during the pandemic, families couldn't spend money. So the kind of pin money, the kind of extra money that families generate from hosting high school students uh, was not as attractive in 2021 and 22 as it was, for example, prior to that. Um, so that presented us with a lot of issues, um, a scarcity of families, uh, an increase in the money that families were looking for to host students. And uh, it has probably changed the landscape of high schools in Ireland um, reasonably permanently, I would think, over the last uh, eight or nine months. But at any rate, you know, from the perspective of um, a high school program, uh, unlike a summer centre, you're looking at services. That's mainly what you're looking at. So the stakeholders, the people that are involved in high schools are students, natural parents, schools, host family or residents, overseas partners, and then student advisors or programme providers. Each of these have a significant stake uh, in the whole process of providing high school programmes. Um, can we go on, Norgan? So, um, you know, Lorcan and Delana asked me just to put together what you need to make a good high school program. These are all the things you need to make a good high school program. Um, personally, I've been in this business for a long time. I don't do direct business. I work mainly with partners um, because partners provide the expertise in a local market and the language in the local market for dealing with juniors, minors and with parents that we don't have in our office. So partners are an essential part of our business. <clears throat> Obviously, good students. Nobody wants to spend their entire year dealing with idiots and, um, and, and problem students. So uh, you're looking for partners and yourselves that can weed out the students that are going to work for it. Good application information. Um, you know, this is not like a four-week program where you can get by with minimal information, uh, particularly uh, with regard to things like GDPR and child protection. And believe it or not, in Ireland, students under the age of 18 are regarded as minors. And because they're regarded as minors, our dealings with them uh, take place under the, um, the guidance and the regulations of what's called Children First, which is the primary piece of legislation in Ireland dealing with children and their welfare. So application information is particularly significant. And as we all know, GDPR, when it comes to minors and issues like their health and family backgrounds, is all significant. Um, school history, legal protection, and so forth. Um, insurance is a significant factor for uh, most um, high school providers, both here and in the UK, and is um, certainly in parts of the UK now that it's becoming uh, an accredited scheme through government agencies is a requirement. Um, good families in Garda vetting. Um, we're well aware of the level of competition in Ireland uh, for, for, um, from those providing high school programmes. And they range from the really good, which is obviously what MEI is about, to the really awful, which is what uh, we're not about. And in many cases, the really awful are the ones where there's no police vetting of families or staff, no uh, child protection training for staff, uh, no professional standards and so forth. Um, so I think while price is an important feature on high school programmes, the quality of service and the background checks, guard vetting and so forth that takes place, there are as important and sometimes more important in many respects than simply price. And lastly, to my mind, the biggest issue with good relationships with all of the stakeholders in this is how you communicate with them. Um, so I think that they're the issues and they're the standards uh, that you have to set for yourself when you're operating a high school program. Lorcan, I don't know what I'm coming up with next. No, I, th I think that's it, Declan. Is that it? Okay, Grant. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're very welcome. So thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much, Declan. Much appreciated. Uh, and our second uh, MEI High School Ambassador is Niall Campbell from the MLI Group. So I'm going to hand you over to Niall now.
There we are, sorry. I'm not sure if my video is coming through perfectly there. Um, seeing myself a little blurry, but anyway, apologies for that. No, it's um, okay, it's reasonably clear. Okay, so um, I'm from MLI International Schools and we've been running high school programs, I guess, for the last 25 years. I've been in MLI for the last seven. So I'm just gonna explain a little bit about the Irish school calendar and then the types of bookings we can take in terms of host families, boarding schools, private, public, et cetera. So the Irish um, schools start back um, or start every year in normally in the last week of August. So I guess that most of the high school providers will ask the students to arrive the final weekend of August so, so that we can do a little bit of orientation. And then the term, uh, the school year runs in three terms, term one, term two, and term three. So the first term is from the final week of August or the first week of September up until Christmas. So it's about 17 weeks. Um, the second term um, starts in early January. So the schools normally go back something around the 6th, 7th, 8th of January, and they run right up until the week before Easter. So obviously that can depend in length, um, depending on when Easter lands each year. So it sometimes can be the end of March or sometimes it can be right into April. So um, that's term two. And then term three is a very short term. Um, schools go back uh, after Easter, about a week, uh, sorry, a week after Easter. So the Monday, uh, eight days after Easter. And this term is really, really short. It's six to seven weeks. And normally this particular term in the Irish secondary schools or high schools focuses mostly on doing the end of year exams. So um, I think most of, uh, most of the high school providers wouldn't normally take bookings for just term three uh, because it's not really a very good experience for the students just to be put into um, a classroom where they're revising and studying and taking exams. Now, apart from that, the school holidays are as follows. In the first term, we have a half term break, which is one week long, and it's always at the end of October. Um, then we have a two week Christmas holidays. So as I said, schools will normally finish up around the 22nd of December and start back around the 6th of January. Um, there's then another half term break, which is one week in the middle of February. And then again, as I already mentioned, there's two weeks holidays at Easter. So in total, um, the students study for 30 to 32 weeks, I believe it is. And although they're here for 38 weeks, maybe six of those weeks would be school holidays. So if we can go on to the next slide. Let me see if I can do it. Um, so first I'll talk about boarding schools. Um, Boarding schools are very, very popular, I guess, mostly for non-EU students um, because placements are normally only available for a minimum of one academic year. And to be honest, the way the boarding schools are going, they're getting a lot of demand for, for students to international students being placed in the schools. Most boarding schools are actually moving towards making a preference for students who will actually stay for more than one year. So I know this is quite an attractive option, more so for non-EU students. That said, of course, they will, uh, boarding schools will take uh, students for one academic year from EU. They would prefer it normally to be the transition year or the fourth year of, of secondary school uh, because going into fifth year, which is uh, the start of the leaving certificate program, uh, it can be disruptive and they normally can't replace the student if they, um, when they, when they move on to sixth year. So if a student starts in the fifth year, um, they will leave and the, and the school will not be able to take another student into sixth year because it's the final year and they're studying for the leaving certificate exam. So basically, boarding schools are available to both non-EU and EU students, but they have a preference A, towards a minimum of an academic year and B, towards students who will stay for more than one year. Obviously, in boarding school, the accommodation is on campus, normally within the school. Um, as I said, it's open to EU and non-EU students. Most boarding schools are private schools, so uh, you can get a study visa for the non-EU students. 
Um, and high school, I think this is quite important. High school providers will organize host family vacation during school holidays. As I've already mentioned, there are about six weeks of school holidays during the year. It's not always um, convenient for the students to fly home, especially if they're coming from the other side of the world. And then another thing to point out is that most boarding schools, in fact, really realistically, all the boarding schools have some exodus weekends. That means they choose other weekends during the school year where they actually close up um, normally for four to five days. Uh, and of course, then the, the high school provider ourselves, um, HSI and all the other high school providers we'll get to later, will automatically organize the, some accommodation for the students during that time. Now, people will often ask, uh, why do they need to work with a provider um, in order to get a placement in a boarding school? Because sometimes boarding schools will take them directly from the foreign agency. The reason really is because after a student has been placed in a boarding school, the school will always expect that there is a local guardian, a local guardianship provider who will take care of the, all the students' needs when they're here. So the school did not look for extra accommodation for the students. It is certainly not included in their fees. The school do not um, generally bring kids to doctors, to hospitals when they have medical problems. They expect that the student will have a local guardian in Ireland who will take care of all those um, issues and tasks. Um, and as well as that, the provider will be able through good relationships with the various schools to easier get a placement in the school. So because they know that they're going to be working with us, um, they're more likely to, to give any, place, um, any student a place in the school. We will organize all their extra needs as well as what I've always men already mentioned, but things as well, such as um, residence permits, visa applications, all these things are, um, for all these for all these reasons, the students need to have um, an Irish guardian or an Irish company who represents them in the school. Um, okay, so I think we'll move to the next slide. Um, so then the other option in high school programs is as as uh, Declan was already talking about, was the homestay option, the host family option. These are available both for public and private day schools. So non-EU students can also have the option to live in a host family. But of course, in order to live in a host family and apply for a visa, you need to, uh, you need to be able to, produce, uh, to name the family where the student's going to be living. You, they will also need a guard of vetting certificate or else they will not be given a visa. So it is very important then to be dealing with a reputable company which can provide all these documents. Now, in public and private day schools, placements are generally available for an academic year, a term that could be term one or term two, or a semester. So some people will see a semester as August until January or January until June. So depending on the country they're coming from, in, we can offer semester. It is obviously more um, operationally easy to take a student right up until Christmas holidays and then... Uh, sell the second semester, which is a combination of term two and term three. That gives the kids enough time to be in the classroom to study so that they're able to take the, uh, the exams at the end of the school year. Obviously, in this case, the, whole, the accommodation is in host families. But like, like Declan said, all the families will be police checked, visited. There will be people that we know. And as it's a long term um, placement, it's really, really important to have very, very good and reliable host families. EU students can attend both public and private schools, whereas non-EU students can only attend private schools. So what is a private school? A private day school is what we would call in Ireland a fee-paying school. And as I said, in order to get a visa, if you're coming from a non-EU country, you must show that you have fully paid your fees to the fee-paying or private day school. Okay. So these are just some of the MEI members or the MEI members who do provide um, high school programs. I know they've already been mentioned in all the slides before, but ATC language schools provide uh, high school programs in Dublin and all across Ireland. There's good availability. The contact person there is Sylvia. Uh, their unique features are local ATC coordinators in all locations. So as I mentioned before, this coordinator is actually what I would personally call a guardian, 
but it's the same thing. And it's really important to have this guardian coordinator living in the same area where the children are studying. So that when there is a, a problem, when there is a problem, when they need to go to the doctor, when the school has an issue with the student, they can be there straight away. So they offer an all-inclusive package uh, or a smart package, and there's continuous support between ATC agent and to ensure the, the student's sat satisfaction. I think as Declan already mentioned, it's really important in these programs to have extremely good uh, communication between the provider and between the agency. It's not possible for the provider normally to deal directly with so many different parents. So it is so important to have a very good agent who can help out, who can communicate to parents, who can deal with We can move to the next slide. And uh, then there are Shandon Language Solutions who have been in the, in the business for many, many years. Like ourselves, they have availability nationwide um, and the contact person is Owen. And their unique features are over 30 years experience in welcoming international students to high schools. It is so important in this business to have this experience. Uh, to have the contacts, to, to know the principals, to know the, the schools really well. They have local student coordinators to look after the welfare of the students. Again, as I said, what I referred to previously as guardian and what Declan preferred to, uh, referred to as guardianship. And they work with over 100 schools in Ireland. So McDonald Language Academy are based in Kilkenny. The contact person is Isha. Um, so the students are given a choice of schools to attend in Kilkenny. They organize regular weekend activities and day trips, and they provide the students with all the supplies. So they organize all the books, uniforms, etc. And Kilkenny obviously is a beautiful location, as we've been mentioned before. Um, okay, so then ourselves, MLI International School. So we also work nationwide. Uh, we have some availability remaining in Dublin and outside Dublin schools. I would be your main contact there. Those are my information. And if we move on. So we also offer a large choice of high schools. I think we work with something like 40 schools, different schools this year. We employ full-time professional guardians. Um, some other people refer to them as the local coordinator. We would call it guardianship. All our guardians are working nine to five, Monday to Friday, full time. We also organize extra activities uh, on weekends for the students. So mainly based in Dublin, but also based in their in their local location if they're outside Dublin. And we promise to provide one activity per month. OK. Equinox Education Services work nationwide on the high school program. The contact person is Noel Doyle, who's here below me. And those are his contact details. So they have over 25 years experience. As you see, all the reputable high school providers have been in the business for a long, long time. They also employ the local coordinators, which will be within easy access of the students. And they have a longstanding relationship with the schools that they work with. And as I said before, it is so important to have this longstanding relationship with the schools because you do tend to find that it's easier to get a placement in the school if you're going through a provider who works with the schools and also get solutions to problems when problems do arise, because this is really a people business. If you know the people that you're working with, if you know the schools that you're working with, you tend to be able to get things done much, much easier. Okay. Um, ISI Ireland are also a nationwide provider. The contact person is Sarah, and those are her contact details. And they have a dedicated team of staff and they, as per, per most standard regulations, they employ a staff to student ratio of one to 30. So no particular staff member will have more than 30 students to look after. The high school team maintains continuous contact with their students. Um, that's a very important thing, whether it be physically visiting or having them on WhatsApp, to always be available and contactable by the students because kids are kids. And if they're staying for a long time, they always have little questions, little problems, not necessarily problems. Sometimes they're just questions, but to have someone on board who's able to answer them straight away is very important for their experience. All their staff have undergone child safeguard training 
and comply and all the company representatives have been Garda vetted. Okay, and Atlas Language School, they work really in the greater Dublin area. Uh, the contact person is Sebastian and his contact information is right there. They have good availability. They offer unique personalized support for the students. They uh, match the students to the schools. So basically when the students have particular requirements, it could be a, a subject that they need to study in school or, or some kind of um, activity or sport that they want to practice, they will match the student to the school. And obviously they also offer full guardianship support. I think that you see that we all offer full guardianship support. Um, and then we have Future Learning, which are a nationwide uh, provider. They have good availability and the contact person is Selena. So they offer a wide variety of, of excellent schools in different locations, cities, towns, and rural areas. So you'll always find students and parents specifically have specific requests about where they will be placed. They have a dedicated high school team, uh, again, another a team of guardians, as we've mentioned before, and they include two excursions per year in their package. And the Cork English College, they work just in the Cork City and suburbs area, they still have places available and the contact person is Sunny, uh, who has spoken before. Um, their unique features are to offer a great selection of high quality schools in the area. It's a very safe destination. And they also have a dedicated team of coordinators or guardians who look after the students. And then we have High Schools International. The, um, this is uh, Declan's co uh, company, Declan, who spoke before. They, they work all over the That's country. That's not my email address, by the way. That is not Declan's email address. <laughs> I'm sure that that will be said. Oh, my number. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, HSI work nationwide. Um, and Declan is the main contact if we want to move on. Uh, so they're 33 years in the business in both Ireland and the UK. And uh, I think what's unique probably is that they're really specializing only in high school placements. Uh, they're the founder member of AGBI and they're accredited also by BSA, which is the Boarding Schools Association in the UK. They have placements all over the country. They're full-time guardianship staff and offer a unique online school finder availability to tool. So kids can go in, our agents can go in and check the availability in different schools, and they have an online inquiry and application system. Okay, um, so we're on to questions. Perfect. Uh, thanks very much, Declan and Niall, for your contributions. Um, I'll just check, there's, there's two questions in the chat box so far. If anybody else has anything they want to ask about high schools as well, please feel free to, to add your question in. Um, can an agent apply for guardianship services only if they apply directly to a school, a boarding school in this example? Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, one of the big issues, particularly with boarding schools, is places are relatively limited. This is not like the UK, where you know there might be 80, 90 percent international students. Over here, it's usually 10 to 20 percent. So places are limited. So guardianship is generally a full package guardianship program. In most cases, it's not kind of like university guardianship. Mm -hmm. So they're not cheap. Yeah. And uh, also to answer the question that the, if you don't directly employ a guardian a ship company, then the school will insist on you employing one anyway. And they will normally give out a list of, of guardians uh, uh, after the fact, after the fact that the student has already been placed, fees have been paid, then they will say, OK, now you've got to appoint guardians. Here's a list of guardians. So, uh, yeah, we would also accept guardianship only students. Uh, I would say that in future, it is better just to apply directly through the thing, uh, through the agent. I would promise almost certainly that if you come through the agent, there's a bigger chance that you'll get the placement in the school. I don't know if Declan will agree. I think you would. And you will also end up paying the same price anyway. Yeah. Because well, when you add up all the extras that have to be included, um, that would actually be the price that we're offering in the first place. So there's really a lot of, not, not really a lot of disadvantage to going directly through the, the guardianship company or the high school provider to start with. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Thanks, Niall. The, the um, IB issue there, Norman, is there's only three schools in Ireland offer IB, and they're all private schools. There are no public schools offering IB in Ireland. Yeah, so just a question there for any for people who may not have picked it up. Uh, do non EU students coming from IB schools also have to own, have to only attend boarding and private day schools? Any chance for them to attend private public schools? And as Declan touched on, there there are very few providers of of IB in Ireland. Mm -hmm. None of you students can't attend public schools anyway. So the question is kind yeah. of already eliminated at that point because none of you students will need to get um, a study visa uh, or when, if they don't need a visa to arrive in Ireland, they will need to register in the, the immigration and to register in immigration in order to be able to stay for more than three months, they will need to be attending a private school in any case. But as Declan said, the only schools that provide IB programs are already private schools. Yeah, perfect. Question from Anna. Um, do the host families help students with their homework? Generally, no. Yeah. Sometimes they will, but it's not something you'd ask a family to do. Mm -hmm. You'd never ask a family to help a student with homework. Okay. Um, a question from Brian Christensen. As a Spanish a Spanish agent, uh, this year we have seen very high numbers of Spanish students in some schools, sometimes causing serious complaints from parents and students. Uh, since we do insist that our students make an effort to integrate with with this in the school, host family, local community, this can be difficult with a higher number of Spanish speaking students in the same class year. Is it something the providers uh, will attend? Perhaps work closer with schools to in order to minimize this problem as much as possible. Generally, it's a problem. It's been a problem for many, many years. And um, it's just much more acute now. It's a bigger problem now than it was even three or four years ago. And to be perfectly honest, part of the problem are Spanish agents who are dealing directly, bringing students into Ireland and putting them in. And it's the same with Italian, putting them into local areas, perhaps where they have run summer centers. Um, some of the schools are really good. Uh, some of the schools will make a big effort to restrict the number of any one nationality coming in. But unfortunately, other schools don't. And the unique feature of Irish schools, even public schools, Irish public schools are not owned by the state. They have a degree of independence with regard to who they can accept and not accept in. Mm -hmm. So they can decide themselves. And we've all heard the stories of a transition year class, for example, made up entirely of Spanish or entirely of Italian. In some schools that I know of, even where there's two or three transition year classes made up entirely of international students. Um, schools in Ireland receive um, support from the state, obviously, um, for any in, for, for EU or Irish students enrolled on full time programs over here. And if schools want to increase their staff numbers, for example, they can use international students to increase the number of registered students and therefore get extra staff. So it is a problem, but it's a problem that's exacerbated and partly created by the numbers of international agents um, who are coming in to set up their own programs in Ireland. And they're obviously focused on one area. The benefit of somebody like MLI or myself or ATC or whatever is that we're nationwide. We might have an office in Dublin, but we place throughout the entire country. The um, agents coming in and the local people who offer programs are entirely local. So all the students from those organizations are concentrated in one area in maybe one or two schools. And therefore, you get a huge number of Spanish or Italian students in, in schools. Mm -hmm. I think the other issue with Spanish students is that they generally always apply for a transition year. Um, so most of the other international students coming from other countries wouldn't normally be in transition year. They would normally prefer to be in fifth year or other years. So um, if the students were coming a little bit younger from Spain, first, second, third year, there'll be less Spanish in the class. And if they were prepared to study in fifth year rather than transition year, there would certainly be less Spanish in the class as well. But uh, yeah, Spanish tend to always choose transition year as their option. Um, and they tend to be the only uh, of the big nationalities that prefer to study in transition year. So I think that also exacerbates the problem a little bit. Thanks, Niall. Uh, just the, the final question on high schools, uh, and, and I presume there's a scale on this, but um, what is the general price of a private high school? And I suppose we're talking boarding and day school as separate entities there. 
Or even, like obviously it's how long is a piece of string because yeah. you know you can buy them relatively cheaply um, and you have to look as I said earlier I think you really have to look at the package you have to look at this the quality of service and all that kind of thing um, but I suspect that you're probably not looking at anything much below 13 or 14 thousand euro per year um, and that would be a package for accommodation tuition transfers guardianship 24 emergency contact books uniforms transfers and so forth and then boarding schools can go up as far as 34, 35, 40,000 uh, per year, depending on the school. So it's a wide, wide range. Thanks, Declan. Um, how are the school years called in Ireland compared with the UK system? Um, I suppose mm -hmm. no touched on that a little bit yeah. in, the, in the presentation from sort of it's transition on. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, it's, it depends on, it's, it differs in every school. England goes to year 13, for example, mm -hmm. whereas most non-European agents uh, measure everything by the American grading system, which goes to grade 12. But grade 12 in America is the same as year 13 in England. It just depends on what you call the starting years in school. In Ireland, we have junior infants, senior infants, and uh, sometimes second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth class. Whereas in England, you have first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. So... Um, they're basically, um, it's the same in most countries, except for a tiny number of countries who have one year less than we have in most European countries. They have an 11 year system. We have a 12 year system. England mm -hmm. has a 12 year system. America has a 12 year system. Spain has a 12 year system. Mm -hmm. yeah. We actually in Ireland have a 14 year system, as Declan said. So it's well, eight years English. in primary yeah. and six years in secondary. So mm -hmm. the UK schools have seven years in secondary. And we have six years in secondary. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do an extra year of primary. And so, even though six years in secondary, the, the transition year isn't always compulsory in other schools. So it mm -hmm. could be a fifth year, go first year, second year, third year. Transition is the gap between the junior cycle and the senior cycle. Then you go into fifth year, fifth year and sixth years of preparation for your leaving cert exam to go into university. So it would depend on, on um, which school, like, most majority of schools offer transition year, but majority of them, it's not compulsory. It's something that um, Irish students would apply for. It's a non-academic year. It's a kind of transition between the junior cycle and the senior cycle. It's a year for self-development. Um, and that's why a lot of international students choose that as a, as, a, as a year to come and improve their English. While fifth year is quite academic. And so if you have students who are more academic orientated, and who need to do this, the same subjects um, to co validate their year. Like fifth year is quite a good year, and there's mm -hmm. many options um, of many different subjects all across Ireland in, in all of our public schools and our private schools available mm -hmm. to international students for fifth year. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier about the Spanish students in transition year. They would actually be able to study fifth year and still validate their studies at the end of the year. So one of the ways to get less Spanish in the class would be for some of those more academic students uh, to actually study fifth year when they come to Ireland. Okay, thanks very much, Niall and Aoife. Um, so I think we'll, we'll round it up there in terms of the uh, high school programs. Um, obviously, if you have any more questions, feel free to, con to uh, contact our panelists after the uh, webinar and, and we'll share all the contact details of the different schools that have been uh, presented today. Um, just before we wrap up, I just wanted to highlight, um, just highlight an event uh, that we're running this summer. I suppose today's kind of been a whistle stop tour of Ireland through the different regions. Um, but um, during the during uh, July this year, we will be running um, the MEI Junior Focus Fam Trip. Um, it's the first time since 2019, so four years since we we last did a summer fam trip. And effectively, what it is is uh, bringing the agents to see the summer centres while they're in operation. There's a short window while they're while while these uh, centres, because they're generally temporary centres, are actually available to us. I know July can be busy for agents, but it really is a unique opportunity to see uh, a junior center in full flow. Um, so we'll send you all the, the details of that event um, post this webinar, and hopefully a few of you will be able to actually come and visit Ireland in person. We'd be delighted to have you. Um, so I suppose just to um, just to close up um, today's session, I just want to thank all of our speakers for their contributions. 
Um, thank you to all of the international agents that have joined us for this talk. I know there's a, there's a wide variety of different markets representative from all over Europe, but also from further afield in Turkey, Russia. Uh, we have some agents from uh, Latin America as well and a couple from Asia. So uh, delighted and encouraged by the interest in Ireland. Um, we, we hope that you got some value out of the webinar today. Um, like I said, come and join us in July to see Ireland in person. Um, and um, we look forward to welcoming all of your students in 2023. So thanks very much. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.